What's going on guys and girls, it's Ghost Robo and welcome to one of my most anticipated games in existence. This is For Honor. For Honor is freaking fantastic. I played the game at E3 2015, played the game at E3 2016, played the game at PAX Prime 2015, and recently I got to see a whole lot more of the game. I sent my good friend Gabe to play it at Ubisoft up in San Francisco. He brought back footage, he brought back knowledge, and then I've been immersing myself in all of the new info, because there's a lot of it. This game really struck me initially last year because of how fresh and fun it was. It delivers this really intense tactical combat that reminds me of Dark Souls, and merges it with this frenetic multiplayer team-based gameplay that I think creates a, a very visceral and insanely enjoyable combination. It's like these one-on-one -on -one duels that don't feel button mashy, but don't feel super, super like, oh my god, you have to press a million keys at once. It just strikes a really nice balance and has a great ebb and flow to the matches and modes. But when I played, there was only one kind of character. There was the knight, and he was just one kind of knight, and that's all I had. And I thought it was still so much fun. And I played it over and over and enjoyed it over and over again. And I actually was super good at it. If you go back and watch my earlier gameplay, I crushed. And so you go around the map, uh, the battlefield holding these different capture points, fighting one on one or one on two or one on three if you're un very unlucky against other players and then duking it out with the AI grunts in the middle. But that was back then. Now they've added so much and expanded the game to bring in variety to the hilt. And it looks like it is going to be one of the best of 2017. It doesn't come out till February. It got delayed. Well, not really. It never had a date, but I thought it was coming this year. But now it's coming 2017. But it's okay because it looks like they're using that time to really uh, fully flesh out and express the idea of this game. They added single player, uh, which you got to see from me back in June. And now you're getting to see samurai gameplay and later Viking gameplay uh, in really, really a, a way that shows the variety uh, of For Honor. Because now there are 12 heroes spread across three factions, and this creates super cool and interesting battles and dynamics where you've got different styles of fighters going after each other. And I talked a bunch to Gabe, and I really uh, asked him, you know, did it feel balanced? Did it feel like these different heroes could compete with each other in a way that was fun and equal and he said absolutely they've nailed it he enjoyed every mode and match he played just like I did and they announced a bunch of new modes too so now there is this dominion mode which is the one I played where you're going to capture these points there's a dominion elimination mode where you basically only have one life there are one versus one modes uh, which sounds super cool and Gabe said was his favorite and there's a two on two which is my personal uh, most looked forward to because I like teaming up with either my brother or a good friend and doing work like imagine pairing a viking with a samurai or a samurai with a knight and you don't just have to pick between those because now they've added these individual heroes amongst the classes so i'll throw the graphic on the screen you've got peacekeeper warden conqueror and lawbringer in the knight faction you've got orochi kensei shugoki and nobushi under the samurai banner and you've got berserker raider warlord and valkyrie slain forth from the viking ship and they all look different they all play different and they've added new moves, they've added a whole lot of variety uh, to really spice things up and keep things fun beyond the first few hours. So each faction, Viking, Samurai, Knight, has four heroes that fit into four classes. There's Vanguards, who are sort of the average beginner, well-balanced heroes that are good uh, in offense and defense. There's Assassins, who are offensive specialists, they're great at duels, uh, but they can quickly get overwhelmed, but they're not the guy you want holding down a point. They are more the ones to roam around, get in there, kill somebody, like a specialist. There are Heavies, who do hold down points very well. They can tank it out against NPCs or against human enemies. And then you've got Hybrids, who are a mixture. They wield longer-range weapons, and they kind of fit in as uh, an in-between. Now, like I said, I've only played one, but knowing that there's 12 options, is super exciting and they can be guys or girls which i think is a nice uh, thing in 2016. you're seeing right now gameplay of the kensei uh samurai who gabe really really enjoyed uh, back at e3 i thought the samurai were the coolest looking guys and so it's no surprise that that was his favorite later on you'll see a viking raider and a knight warden uh and i believe the knight warden is who i played uh in all of my time with the game so here is this viking Raider, um, and Gabe wanted me to make sure, like, you know, he's got a super sweet move they're playing on PS4. If you hit square, 
uh, he will do this epic move where he picks up his opponent, throws him, and then he's open to an attack. And they've also added some balancing uh, mechanics here. So when you get double teamed or triple teamed, before you would just get absolutely demolished. Now though, there is a revenge meter that fills as you're getting, uh, you know, doubled or tripled. And if that builds up, you basically unleash a berserk revenge mode where you no longer get stunned and you can just attack, attack, attack without having to worry about animations or any of that jazz. I think that sounds good, and it's a great way to sort of balance the fight. I like the fact that it's not across the entire uh, match, but there's that move, by the way. That's sick. Uh, boom! Look at that hard hit. Go, Gabe, go. I wish it was me, but I'm so glad that you brought this footage to us. Anyhow, uh, that just got me really excited. Huh. Um, so, I like that it's not across the whole battlefield. You don't want unfairness. The, the critical thing here is that it feels balanced, and uh, every character is, is beatable with the right skill, with the right team composition, with the right strategy. They do a nice job of swinging the battle back and forth. In this Dominion mode, it's first to 1,000 points, but if you get to 1,000 points, you must eliminate the entire team. They basically lose all of their tickets and go down to one life only. And if you're not able to eliminate and wipe the full squad, they can take capture, they can recapture capture points, take them back, and get back into the battle and reset things. Because if you have a thousand, they retake a point. Now it's gonna lower you down to 900 and give them plus 100, which might even things and even flip flop uh, the winner of this battle. Uh, Gabe also wanted me to let you know that now your abilities that you're working to build, almost like kill streaks or perks, uh, they carry over across deaths. Previously they didn't, and now that they they refine things, they carry over. Uh, so you continue to build them even if you're dying so that a player who is kind of sucking will still have some uh, some fun and an ability to gain an upper hand as the battle continues. Um, it looks like UI-wise and interface-wise, they've also spiced things up uh, quite a bit, and it's a great-looking game. Like, I played single-player, I played multiplayer, it looks good across both. There really isn't much, uh, as far as I've seen, dip. And so it's nice to see that even with all these players uh, and all this action going on, it still looks very next-gen and has a really nice weight to it. I think the way that Warner controls is absolutely critical to this game feeling like a AAA top-tier title and not just uh, smash them, bash them, beat them up. Because it easily could, but the weight and the timing they've got nailed down with the weaponry and the different uh, factions being able to have slightly different tempo, it adds a little bit of that sort of rhythm and a little bit of that really good feel when you've got a weapon uh, that that weighs as much as it should. It's the same with guns in, in first-person shooters. You don't want things that are really light and pew pew. You want things that have heft to them, and they sound like they do. Um, and For Honor does that with melee, and I like the fact that they're able to deliver a really compelling melee-driven experience uh, in the multiplayer space. That's something that I haven't had one that I really liked. I know there have been games like that, but there hasn't been one that was really for me, and For Honor is definitely it. Um, if you're not familiar with the game, hopefully you are by now, uh, you can aim left, right, up in these different directions to uh, sort of go rock, paper, scissors, with your enemies and try to take them out. You don't want to be aiming uh, the same way they're blocking. You kind of have to counter. Um, but there's other moves that will help you to stun them. There's moves that will help you to open them up. Uh, and there's ways for your team to sort of team up to really take people down quickly. Now, uh, I'll have footage of that 1v1 dual mode later. And that is going to really blow your minds because I think that's going to create some super intense streams and some super great videos where we can just set up like a queue of people and like bring it on. Let's see who can beat me in 1v1 duels. It's a game I want to get good at and I don't have a lot of time to put into individual games because I play so many and I got to make so many different videos. But this is one that I think is really going to suck up a lot of my, my playtime because it has a really just a nice sense of satisfaction when you do well. And that was the case in single player and multiplayer, although it's definitely greater in multiplayer when you can turn to your friends or, you know, cheer with them across the internet or text them or whatever you want to do. Uh, it's pretty darn cool. There's also now a, a drop shot, a one-shot kill from above, apparently, that's super sweet. And I like the fact that they have expanded the moveset beyond just a typical light and heavy strike. You really feel like a, a fleshed-out warrior now. Uh, who has a lot at his disposal, his or her disposal, just like in Call of Duty or something of that sort, you'd have, you know, your primary, your secondary, your grenade, all that. Uh, I like that they ha have done that. Um, 
I, I really can't say enough good things about Forerunner. Every time I played it, every time I've seen it, I just get more and more excited for it. The initial trailer, I was like, what, what the heck? But ever since then, like, it is so dang good. And I cannot wait for February, and I'm so glad to see that they're using the time uh, to really build upon what they, you know, their vision, and, and really achieve it. And rarely does a game get rave reviews uh, from everyone I've talked to, but whether it's been Twitch streamers, YouTubers, PR people, just random fans, uh, everyone that plays Forerunner comes away, like, super impressed and ready to, to buy it. And that's a good thing. There's... You know, a lot of spectacle and showmanship in games these days. But how many games do you put in someone's hand and they just walk away like, dang, that was super fun. And that's what 400 delivers. Now we're on the night. This is the Warden. Uh, he's more of the straightforward, uh, you know, average middle ground fighter. But he's still fun to play. Like I said, this is the guy I played in multiplayer. And I had a blast with it. Uh, now, some people may be worried that the NPCs are going to draw away and deter uh, from, you know, the intensity of the battle, but they don't. They really just kind of stand there and give you something to do as you move through the battlefield. Um, and it, it's, it's not something that's going to really, you know, like, waste your time or dilute the experience in any way. I like the fact that we're seeing new maps. Uh, I like the fact that we're seeing weather effects and new environments. I'm curious what all the different abilities are going to be, and I'm curious how team composition is going to go. Gabe was saying at the event, some teams tried to do all samurai or all viking or all knight, and I'm curious if, like, that's going to work well. Like, what if you have one of every class? Or what if you have one of every class across the three factions? Like, uh, you know, uh, a vanguard from the knights, and then an assassin from the samurai, and then a heavy from the Viking, or what is going to be sort of the winning formula, and hopefully there isn't one, hopefully there's multiple, and hopefully your skill set and your preference of speed or strength or in-between uh, really help dictate how you can be successful, uh, and it, it's really a skill-driven game. That's what I want, and I want there to be a lot of variety, and I think it'll be super cool to team up with your friends as not just ho-hum grunt nightman, but as like, hey, I I know that I am the best Shugoki out here, I know that I'm the best Lawbringer out here, I know that I am King Warlord, and we are going to go to work on you, and then imagine how crazy that's going to get in those 2v2s, when you're like, dude, it's my Kensei, and your Orochi, versus their Raider, and their Peacekeeper, and we're duking it out, and Gabe told me that that was like, by far, those 1v1s and those duels were like, the most intense uh, things he saw. And remember, this also is a full-on single-player campaign that was really enjoyable. It's got cutscenes. You play across the three different factions, and I think that will be fun uh, and, and a nice addition to an already super unique and super exciting game, but they're making sure they do due diligence and, and deliver that full $60 value, uh, especially in light of recent games that have omitted it and really been sort of cursed uh, to the depths for it. So that is For Honor. Hope you guys are excited for it. I am super pumped. I hope I get a chance to play it again uh, before launch because I really, really miss it. As silly as that is. This is one of my, like, favorite games I've played in the last two years. And I am so pumped that it's coming out now in, what, five months? Sounds like a long time, but the way life flies, it'll be here before you know it. And we will be duking it out as Viking, Samurai, and Knights. Hopefully you are pumped. Hopefully you're excited. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Again, shout out to Gabe. Thank you to him for helping us out with this. Shout out to Ubisoft for uh, making sure I got some good footage of my most anticipated, one of my most anticipated uh, games in existence. And thank you to you guys for watching and being a part of our awesome channel, which will soon feature For Honor. Until that time, though, guys and girls, thanks so much for watching. I'm Raymond Destiny. Enjoy and yourself. I love you. Couldn't do this without you, so thank you for being there. Thanks again. Drink so much, all. And we'll see you all later.